Three ways to become a millionaire without effort. Now you'll say, Sven, what's going on with you? Why are you talking about such crazy things? Well, I believe that first and foremost, investing should be simple. We are concerned too much about complicating things in life. But with just a few simple steps, you can make millions over your lifetime. And today I'll discuss three ways that can make you a millionaire with practically no effort, no sacrifice, but that people simply don't do. It's just a shift in your mindset and it will yield you millions over the long term. So stay tuned and let's immediately discuss the first step. The first step is owning and renting. The current mortgage yields are the lowest in history. And if you don't take advantage of that, I think you will regret it for the rest of your life. I just found a quick example of two similar apartments that are in Los Angeles. And you can see here how an apartment of 900 square feet rents out for $3,200 per month. On the contrary, the same apartment is sold for about 800, 850,000. If I go and I take a 30 year fixed mortgage rate with a 10% down payment, then the rate is about $3,500 per month. Now the renters will immediately tell me, yes, I pay rent $3,100 and the mortgage is $3,500 plus the down payment. Okay, I say. What will happen to the rent? What happens to the rent every year? The rent is adjusted for inflation. So if I put on that $3,100 a 2% increase, after 5 years your rent is already at $3,500. Over 30 years your rent will be around if inflation is just a 2%, if it goes to 4, if it goes to 10, your rent will be sky high. If rent stays at 2% over 30 years, your rent will be, monthly rent will be around 5,600 per month. However, the 30 year fixed mortgage, fixed, will be always fixed for the next 30 years. After 30 years and one month, what is the mortgage? Zero. So, owning really pays off in the long term. In addition, house prices usually go up. If we bought a building back in 1987, thus 30 years ago, with a fixed rate mortgage, now it would be valued 2.5 times more than it was valued then. Plus, the mortgage stays always the same. The rent also increases and the rent increased 2.5 times over the last 30 years. So if you're a renter and you, fix, and you think in a fixed mindset, unfortunately you lose a lot over the long term. Now this is just a quick example from the US. In the Netherlands the things are even better. If you buy, you pay much much less than if you rent. I bought a bigger house and I pay much less than I was paying for a small apartment renting. So that's really a benefit. In the Netherlands, you don't need the down payment. You get 102% 2, of your mortgage, so even better, with an extremely low fixed more interest rate. So really, I think if you look for better deals, you can really find something that's much more valuable to buy than to rent in the same area and over the long term, over 30 years, let's say in the apartment I, you took for Los Angeles, it will be, after 30 years, it will be worth around 2.5 million. So owning will yield 2.5 million over 30 years. Renting will yield zero. Sacrifice equal payments over every month with owning equal payments, fixed payments, renting constantly increasing payments. It's your choice, I'm just saying 2.5 million over 30 years it's a lot of money. It's a you're immediately a multi-millionaire. So if you're renting, think about it. If you move, you don't sell the apartment. You rent it out and somebody else will pay your mortgage. So think also as an investment. So just a simple shift in mindset, minimum sacrifice will bring you to be a multi-millionaire over 40 years. That's one. The second step is don't invest in stupid investments. If you take responsibility over your in financial life and you look for higher interest rates, your returns are going to be hugely different. For example, if I invest $100,000 at 5% for 30 years, my portfolio will get to 
If I invest with a 10% interest rate, my portfolio gets to 1.47 million. The difference between 5% and 10% is 1 million over 30 years. We had 2.5 million for the house. We now have 1 million for just a higher return on $100,000 portfolio. So that's a huge difference. If you let others invest, they invest in a little bit of everything. They don't care about your returns. They care just about their fees. If you let them, they will give, give you a four free. They will give you a positive return. The average investor got a 2.3% return over the last 20 years, while the market returned 7.7. So it's essential that you take responsibility over your financial life and look for high interest investments, at least 10%. The difference is millions and it's not that difficult. Subscribe to this channel, keep watching what we do here, and I really think you can get to 10% or even more over the long term. And the third one is, it's a bit of sacrifice because you don't buy a new car, you buy a four-year-old car and then you drive it for four years. New car also four years and then you buy a new car. And that difference leads to a 2.5 million difference over a lifetime. You don't believe me? Let me show you some figures. The average car depreciation is 50% over four years. So if you buy a second hand car, you pay half the price than a new one. A new car, the average price of a new car in the US is 34,000. So you don't pay 34,000, you pay 17,000 for a four year old car, which is a still good car. Maintenance costs are the same. The difference over that is that if you buy a new car and sell it after four years, you lose $4,250 per year. If you buy a four-year-old car, you lose $2,215 per year. Thus, driving a four-year-old car saves you $2,215 per year or about $106,000 of the over a 50-year period. Now you might say, okay, what is $2,000 per year? That's not much. However, that's $177 per month, and if you invest that over 50 years at a 10% interest rate annual, which is highly possible, even in this market, the differences are staggering. Here I use the bank rate calculator, you can find it online, that compounds investments. Initial amount, $1, monthly deposit, $177 annual interest compounded at 10% number of years, 50 over 50 years, the final saving balance is $2.5 million. It's your choice, what do you want to drive? A four-year-old car, which are pretty good now, or a new car? So I have showed three ways that don't require much sacrifice, but give huge returns. 2.5 million at least on a normal apartment, 1 million on a $100,000 portfolio, so we are already at 3.5 million, and another 2.5 million from just driving a four-year-old car and not a new car. There are plenty other differences, but the results are huge over the long term, especially if you can get the 10% yield, which is not difficult whether you invest in stocks, real estate, or whatever your thing is. So take your responsibility for your life, think about really the long term and what it can bring to you in your life. And the difference is really being poor and being a multi-millionaire. Perhaps not even over 50 years, but over 30, 25, also possible. Think about more such strategies. It's simple, it's easy, doesn't require much effort. You don't need to learn the stock market and the differences are staggering. I'm looking forward to your comments. Please let me know what you feel about this. How do you feel about such strategies and whether you are looking towards investing in such ways. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like the content. We constantly discuss better investment strategies. Click like if you liked it and I'll see you in the next video.